Okay. <laughs> One of the reasons why uh, Coltrane and Elvin Jones played together for so long was because Coltrane was this really ethereal uh, type of a person. You know, he was like he practiced 15 hours a day even when he didn't have a gig. And uh, his whole being was music and then some more music after that. Alvin Jones was from the streets of Detroit. And so his mindset was more earthy. <laughs> and that's the truth. So one day, are there any children here? So one day, we all, we're all children. Yeah, we're all children of the one, but I mean little people, <laughs> you know. So yeah, we're all children. That's no, that's, that is no bullshit. <laughs> we're all children. One day, a reporter asked Elvin, um, gee, you know, when you guys start really playing and, and, and are really getting into it, uh, it seems like... Um, you have some kind of extra sense of communication because you'll be doing this and then cold train and be doing that and it, you know you can you can see it you can feel it you can hear it. So tell me, Mr. Jones, uh, what's the secret? And uh, Elvin said, "You got to be willing to die with a motherfucker." <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry it wasn't supposed to be funny in that sense but when you think about it what, what he was saying was that you know you have, to, you have to be willing to go where the other guy goes and if that means going into the valley of the shadow well you just go right on with him and uh, you know, I've, I've known people like that, but I, but I digress really heavily. <laughs> One more thing about uh, that Coltrane Jones. Uh, I, was, I was in a club in Chicago and um, things were running a little bit late. And uh, the place was supposed to close at three. It was a Saturday night. But on, on Saturdays, they could stay open that extra hour, so they didn't have to close at 2. They could close at 3. So about uh, 1.30, um, the John Coltrane Quartet, John Coltrane, Jimmy Garrison, Elvin Jones, and McCoy Tyner started playing uh, impressions. <laughs> So I said, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, uh, at 3 o'clock, the guy who owned the club tipped through the audience and locked the door so nobody could get in or out. <laughs> uh, and they're still playing, see? So I'm saying, damn, I'm saying, that's so around five fifteen <laughs> when they went back to the melody. <laughs> place went up for grabs, you know. <laughs> and it, it, was, it, was about a, it was about a five or a six minute ending, because you know, it, 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 it required that. 
and then uh, so we hit the we hit the street, you know, and people were hollering, "Love, peace, freedom, love," and it was sunrise. And then later on, I I kind of subliminated all of that because it scared me a little bit, and I didn't think about it again until this same interview. Uh, where Elvin Jones mentioned how you follow somebody. Um, and they asked him what was the longest he'd ever played with, with Coltrane, what was the longest number that they'd ever played. And uh, he didn't say that time in Chicago. He said one time in Philadelphia where they, where they played one tune for a whole matinee about, uh, about three and a half, four hours, something like that. <laughs> impressed the hell out of me. <laughs> and uh, so that's, that's one reason why, why you know, Coltrane impressed me so much. <laughs> what are we supposed to do now? <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> 